Howdy. Welcome to my runcast. It is approximately 8 million degrees right now. It is so hot. I'm in the shade and it's really hot. Uh, all right. um, yesterday, Kevin and I drove into Bangkok and we went to Samart, Samart's gym. It's in the Sai Mai area, just like up north. It's really, really close to Chart Chai Sasakun's gym uh, and actually really close to Takralek's gym. They're all like kind of within a little jaunt of each other. And then Chor Hapiak is not even that far from that. It's maybe like 20, 30 minutes away along a little highway. So you have some solid, nice choice gyms right up in that area uh, if you want to be in Northern Bangkok. Um, we went because we wanted to photograph Chalam Chon. Chalam Chon is a, I don't know, he's maybe like 20 years old or something, but uh, he was 105 pound Raja Damnern champion. Um, and this is actually how I found out that I know him. Um, he's from Samark's gym, and I saw him become 105 pound Raja champion, and I was commenting about it to Tapia, who I trained with, and he was like, oh, he used to train here in Pattaya. And I was like, no shit, he seems like this kid I used to train with at Omi Kun. And Tapia was like, yeah, that's him. He was called Fanta. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I know him. So, you know, boring story that I know this kid. But then, so he had a fight uh, a couple of months ago now, but he lost his belt to Duan Gao Gao, uh, who's like a little Moy Mott fighter. And, um, is a very controversial win slash loss, depending on who's talking. Um, and so they had like an immediate rematch planned. Karahat, who trains Chalam Chalam, was really mad about him losing the fight. And he's like, we're gonna put a germ pot on it. We want a rematch on the next chance, blah, 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 this whole thing. And so they did, they put this huge germ pot on it. And uh, they went and they put a deposit of 100,000 baht for what would ultimately be a 2 million baht side bet. But when you put your deposit, it's a guarantee. So basically, once you've paid your 100,000 baht deposit, you can't make any changes. So if your fighter hurts his shin and can't fight or gets sick and can't fight or can't make weight, whatever, you don't get your deposit back. You're not allowed to make any changes after you've put your deposit in. And so this thing happened where it was supposed to be on March 14th. And then I guess that got changed pretty quickly because they went and paid their deposit for the 21st of March. So that was already moved a week back, whatever. I don't know why that happened, but it wasn't a big deal. We all thought it was going to be on the 21st. And then all of a sudden, uh, I was telling Karahat that we were going to come and take photos of Chalam Chan. And he's like, oh, well, it's actually on the 28th. So like, oh, okay. I guess they moved it again. And then... Um, I think I saw it even maybe before Kara did, that they had moved it again to April 4th. So it got bumped like multiple times. And when I was talking to Yod Kun Pan about this, he was like, they had to move it because they didn't want to compete with other televised things. Like Thailand was playing Korea in a um, football, America soccer uh, qualifier for the 2026 World Cup or something. And uh, so everyone would be watching that. They didn't want to compete with it, blah, blah, blah. This is very very likely that this is one of the reasons that they moved it um but ultimately it got put on this april 4th show that won't be televised you can watch it through an app apparently um i don't know how well that's going i tried to download it and it said it can't be downloaded in my country which i live in thailand so it definitely should be downloaded in my country um but kevin and i are going to the show so whatever so we decided to go uh take photos of chong chan leading into this fight and then we we're gonna go watch the rematch it was all very exciting and um just before we went uh Karhat was complaining online about all the changes all the delays so then the last time that it got delayed from the 28th to the 4th Karhat went online and was like we pay our deposit so that there are no changes and then the promoter just keeps changing it and a promoter from up north so much smaller fries than Bangkok promotions but probably the biggest promoter in Chiang Mai, was like, uh, as a promoter, you're not allowed to make changes either. Like, the, once you put the guarantee in, you're really not allowed to make any changes. So some criticisms went up, and Sia Boat, who's the promoter for this at Pet Yindi, decided to go um, see Samart at his gym as a sign of respect 
and explain to him, I'm sorry, our communication has not been well. That's on my side. I wasn't communicating well, and uh, I kept pushing it for I assumed that they made uh, excuses or gave reasons why they had changed it. I was not at this meeting. I didn't ask about it. I don't know anything about this. Other than that they, like, put photos on Facebook that they had gone to, like, have this big meeting. In Thai, in case you come to Thailand, in Thai culture, going and talking to someone face-to-face -face is a much higher sign of respect than on the phone. So, see about actually going to the gym was a sign of respect. And he ultimately cancelled the entire Dermpon. And the reason he said he was doing that was so that neither side would be having bad feelings. So he's like, what's most important to me is that all sides are happy that everyone is uh, approaching this with love in their hearts for Muay Thai and all this stuff. So we'll just get rid of the Dermpan because it's putting too much pressure and too much stress. And the way that Karhat and Samart had basically framed it is that by delaying it for so long, you have your fighter training really hard and they kind of have this like peak and then taper because they have to start cutting weight. And I imagine Chalam Chan has to cut a lot more weight than Doin 99 does because he's tall. Um, and so basically you're protracting how long this kid has to train really really hard and it's true for both sides but Samart and Carhart were not into it they're like this is very unprofessional and I don't like it um, so those are the reasons that they would be clearing the air and taking the pressure off and like let's just get rid of the germ pot because we've basically been like forcing the kids to get ready not yet get ready not yet in this process of getting ready for the fight but so we went because Kevin wanted to take these photos and uh when I walked in and Chom Chom was doing he was on like a stationary exercise bike I was like hey do you remember me and he's like I do Omi Kun and Petrung I was like well shit he totally knows who I am which is amazing because I hadn't told Carhut that I used to train with him like nobody nobody knows that I used to train with him other than me and Kevin so he actually did recognize me and he recognized Kevin and he was like you had the dog I was like, yeah, you've remembered Chai D too. That's really cool. But his training, he looks strong. He looks like he's been doing really good training. It was really nice to see how they train people at that gym. Because it is a little bit of a, like, um, weird, weird gym. And the reason that it's weird is not that it's, like, God, weird is not the right word. Because it is, like, every gym. It is a very, very traditional gym in terms of, like, the kind of training that they're giving to the little kids and like building them up and stuff. Um, and the trainers are very good. Like they're very, very solid. So everyone learns very good technique and that way it's like a very, very normal gym. But it, it also has this very normal aspect which is that everything is very relaxed and then you work really hard and then it's very relaxed again. But then it also has this kind of strange schedule. It has like much more like high so or kind of middle class people coming in and just doing fitness training like usually gyms are one way or the other but they're not actually both so I guess the reason that Samar's gym feels kind of strange is that it is so solidly both of those things simultaneously which is kind of incredible I haven't really seen that uh, in my experience and I've been to many gyms because I'm filming with these legends and crews for the Muay Thai library, but I've not necessarily seen the regular training at a lot of gyms. So I'm not like, I've been to every gym in Thailand. <laughs> That's not me. I actually don't have tons of experience with different gyms in Thailand. But from the experience I do have going to different gyms in Thailand and seeing the way that they train and spending some time, I have spent, you know, like a week or a few days at some of these gyms. Um, I have an idea for what the balance in gyms is like in Thailand. And it's an interesting interesting case at uh at some arts gym and um Karhat has been teaching there for a number of months now he's in charge of the kids and I can tell he's really happy Karhat Kevin and I say he's like a cat <laughs> in that he just has to have his freedom he's like an outdoor cat that just like fucks off for a couple of days and you don't hear anything from him and then he just comes back and it's like nothing happened like why are we even talking about this kind of thing like he just gets bored of situations or feels too constrained and has to just like go assert his independence and then he'll like come back and figure out his thing he's been at this gym for many many months now i think like six months now and it's the happiest really that i've seen him um at an extended stay at a gym i think that he feels treated well and i think he honestly really enjoys being in charge of the kids he really really likes training kids because he can teach them technique and style uh when you get people who are older 
they kind of already have a way of doing things and it's really hard to like re-implement finesse onto someone who already has a thing that they're doing. It's a nightmare for me. Karahat is incredibly generous in that he's worked with me as much as he has and taught me as much as he has and he's like my idol so I listen and I try so hard to do the things that he teaches me and I try to understand them and I have such an appreciation for his style I think that I can kind of see it in nice ways but fuck it is so hard to do like the generosity and patience he has for me someone who already has a style that is not anything like his style <laughs> and I'm trying to implement these things and he's just like yeah well you know keep working on it we'll go with it whatever um but what was amazing is yesterday he held pads for me and I don't think he's held pads for me since the first time we met and filmed for the Muay Thai library which was like eight years ago maybe seven or eight um, and he held pads for me in that session, but he really doesn't hold pads. That's not really what he does. He kind of, um, uses his body as pad work and does sparring. So I have worked with him many, many times and at length, uh, over the years, Fre not frequently, but like six months since the last time we saw him is the longest that we've like not seen him. We see him pretty frequently. Um, so doing pads with him was really weird because normally we're sparring and I could feel the ways in which he was hindered by the pads. Like he's trying to get me to land kicks and he's like trying to move in certain ways. If we were sparring, he'd be kicking my ass. But because we were doing pad work, I was able to get like a little bit more in. But I was like imitating his movements. I was like, I did this little like switch step and landed a hook and I yelled Gansak. And I think that he misunderstood. I was actually doing a move that he did that knocked Gansak down in one of their fights. <laughs> I was being Gensog, which is so funny that uh, me calling out references to his own fight career, he might possibly misunderstand. But I felt really good. I felt like um, in the time since I've seen him uh, through all of the sparring I'm doing with Yoku Pond, I've gotten a lot more uh, fluid and able to like play in a way that's really, really good. What a beautiful baby. Look at this gorgeous girl. You are fantastic. Um, so I felt like I changed a lot. Like I was really excited. I was like, I was like, wow, I'm really smooth here. And again, pads and sparring are very different. So if I had been sparring with him, I might've been as herky jerky as I normally feel when working with him. But it was really nice to be able to feel that. I had a lot of fun at the gym. Uh, this guy who I had actually just been talking to on Instagram because of Car Hut. Uh, but I just talked to him a couple of days before and I didn't tell him we were coming to the gym. But he was at the gym when I was there, and so we got to meet in person. His name's Joro. And uh, he trains with Carhat a lot. He sent me a video um, of my pad work with Carhat. I was really, really happy to see it. I looked very different from how I look uh, in pad work almost anywhere. Uh, but it's also this thing that I talk about really frequently, which is that like your eyes change so much that you actually just fine tune the things that you're criticizing about yourself all the time. They become smaller and smaller and smaller. It's like that scene from Mean Girls when they're like, my hairline is so weird. My nail beds suck. <laughs> like, it's just these like tiny criticisms. That's, that's what happens as you get better is that I'm looking at myself completely cringing at like my roof or these like slight things that I find really egregious that I didn't know were there because I didn't feel them. So what something feels like and what something looks like can be very, very different. And uh, this is one of the reasons it's hard if you're someone who films your training or who watches your fights back or something like that is that you might actually have a very positive feeling about what a fight felt like or what training felt like. And then when you look at it, you're like, oh, Jesus, that looks really bad. But the opposite also can be true. You can be like, that felt horrible. I sucked in that fight. And then when you go and you watch, you're like, oh shit, I actually look way more balanced than I thought I did. And I was doing some kind of cool things that I didn't know I was doing. Um, so just something to watch out for as someone who uh, reviews themselves over time. Carhat didn't say anything to me in terms of like, uh, he doesn't assess me. This is maybe one of the reasons we get along so well is he's never like assessing. It makes him an amazing corner. Cause he's never like, this is bad, this is good, whatever. But what was really nice is that he's not liked my kick for a really long time. And that's okay with me because one, I'm not a kicker, but two, he has like the most beautiful kick in the history of all Muay Thai. So 
you know, it's like when you compare to Carhot, are you ever going to measure up? No. But when I was kicking, he actually mumbled to himself that my kick was too accurate. <laughs> and it's not too accurate in the way that in English, when we say something's too much of something, it has like a negative connotation. In Thai, too much actually just means like beyond, like this is just so much so the case, like how incredibly so. So it was a really nice compliment when he's like, oh my God, your kick is so accurate. Um, which again, is on a pad. I don't know how accurate it would be if I was trying to land one on him. Um, but that was really, really nice to hear. And then at another point, I was uh, raining some elbows down on him, not hitting him, obviously. And uh, he was putting his hand like this. And so I was elbowing it. <laughs> and finally he was like, I'm not holding a pad for your elbow. I'm trying to protect myself. He threw me on the ground a bunch of times in his like signature moves and he very excitedly showed me a new move that he's developed in the months that he's been training people that's kind of like a little um, adjustment from one that he's had for a really long time. You can actually see him and Nam Kabun teach it at the Moy Khao Summit that we have. Uh, if you're a patron, you can see that in the, in the library. Um, but basically as someone's like blocking and then their leg is coming down off of the block, you kind of hook your foot under it and like carry it off to the side. He does this on a teep. So if I teep right and overextend my teep, he does the same move to just kind of like, like cradle my leg beyond where it should go. And I fell so hard. He was laughing and he's like, yeah, it's really good. I've gotten it on everybody. He's like, I can't do it on the left side yet, but, but with the right, with the right teep, I can do it every time. Like, her hut like the mad scientist you know he's like he's always still working on things he's he's so incredible 30 years ago but his mind is still really active and like I'm gonna try new things I'm gonna come up with new trips like he came up with this completely new trip of how to like trip me against the ropes that we actually ended up naming Titan scales the wall <laughs> because of how he does it but like he basically just invented that out of his head while sparring with me at some point comes up with the most amazing things. He's just like a genius of movement. It's really incredible. Um, yeah, so all that is to say, yesterday was fun. Kevin got some really beautiful photos that he's actually still developing and working and posting. You can see this, if you guys don't know yet, Kevin has a Muay Thai photography page. It's called Kevin's Muay Thai Photography. Um, and you can see the photos that he takes of my fights, of uh, when we're filming for the Muay Thai library, he takes really beautiful artistic photos for that. Uh, on his bikes, he goes on uh, bicycle rides every day. Sometimes he takes photos on those. He just puts up his beautiful, incredible photography that's always changing. Like speaking of Karahut, still thinking and still advancing and still coming up with new stuff. Kevin is like constantly developing his aesthetic and it's really amazing. And uh, I think, I think I can give myself credit too, and that I've definitely continued to evolve my style many years into this, uh, and hopefully can continue to do that. But I'm really in awe of, uh, of how Kevin and Carhot keep doing that. So yeah, all right, let's cool down a little bit. Thanks for my blah, blah, check out those photos. And uh, April 4th is when this fight card is. It will not be televised, but uh, I don't know, Kevin and I will be probably posting stories and stuff from it. I'll try to post on my Instagram while we're there, uh, like we did on the August part, I guess is when the last one was. All right. Thanks guys, we'll be out. <laughs>